What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out wrestlers who are horrible criminals. Now, if you're a wrestler, you already got your profession. You're trying to make your name for yourself. You know, this is something that you obviously have been wanting to do for quite some time. I don't know why you want to take up another profession, a profession in being a criminal. Maybe you're not getting paid as much as you would have liked to. I understand that you may have to work a regular nine to five, but I think, you know, being a criminal added to your uh, resume isn't the, the best option in my personal opinion. You know, you got to choose one profession. Preferably being a wrestler is probably looked a little bit better than being a criminal. So we're going to check out uh, some of these wrestlers that uh, didn't get the memo and decided to be criminals as well and probably didn't go too uh well for them appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel this is by top 10 wrestling let's get right into this uh these shenanigans watching wrestling we are watching a scripted show we are watching wrestlers whose real life personalities and personas may be absolutely nothing like how they are on screen or in the ring mm -hmm. in today's video we're going to discuss some of the most major examples of this from killers to abusers to all around horrible criminals. Before we get into it though, be sure to like and subscribe. I'll give you until the three count to do so. Oh. Hi. 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 I'm already subscribed. There so. it is. Let me know if you beat the count in the comments I'm and already let's there. get into the video. Hope you beat the count and let's get into the video. Brian McGee. The first thing you're probably asking right now is who the hell is Brian McGee? And I'll tell you, I had no idea who Brian McGee was or anything about this story until I was researching for this video. I've literally found out about him in the last 24 hours. Brian McGee is a wrestler who wrestled in Florida under the name DT Porter, and I think I might just read off his biography paragraph from his pro wrestling fandom Wikipedia because this has aged so incredibly poorly. DT Porter has never had it easy. Most of his childhood, he was an outcast, bullied and teased for not having as much as the other children in his neighborhood. It wasn't until high school that DT broke out of his shell by becoming a star in varsity sports. After high school, DT joined the Navy, learning toughness, discipline, and embracing a newfound confidence. After serving his country, DT took to the ring with an attitude of never say die. Once the oppressed, DT is now the one doing the enforcing, determined to take out all of his childhood pain and torment out on the bodies of his opposition. DT lacks mercy and will deliver great anger and furious vengeance on any who stands in his way. Brian began wrestling as DT Porter in 2006 and wrestled across- I mean, it sounds like a nice little setup. I'm just waiting for uh, the, uh, the criminal acts to appear the indie scene all through america he even had a tryout match against apollo cruz from oh, okay. iwa mid-south how crazy is that but he got his big break in 2011 when he was signed to a wwe developmental deal Whoa. wrestling for fcw he made his fcw debut on the 3rd of march fcw event in 2011 it was a six-man tag him buck dixon and kenny lee lost to biggie langston wow Kenneth Cameron, aka tom latimer and rick vaughn he had another match a month later at an FCW event in the FCW arena, him and Deshaun Bishop were defeated by Buck Dixon and Eric Rowan. But unfortunately, crazy. that would be his last FCW match, and he was cut from the company after only just a year, going 0-2 in the company. But this would not stop him in his wrestling career as he would continue to wrestle in Florida. He would wrestle for more regional indies there, wrestle for places such as the NWA, Zero One, and of course, the Team Vision Dote. Oh, for... Come on, someone shut down this fucking school already. Oh my days, of course he went there. His wrestling career heavily slowed down since leaving SCW, and eventually it would come to a crashing halt after a huge revelation about him. In uh -oh. July 2013, Brian McGee was arrested facing charges of murder after a fatal stabbing of his Whoa. girlfriend. Whoa. Uh -oh. Quoting from the ledger, officials said the series of events started when a woman was found stabbed to death at Jeez. the Del Lago apartments in Tampa. The woman, whose identity has not been released yet, died at the scene. Authorities only said McGee and the woman killed did know each other. Deputies said they quickly knew who they were looking for. Officials said when authorities tracked McGee down, he led them on a car chase on Interstate 75 from Hillsborough County oh, to County Line man. Road in Pasco County. 
After his car crashed, McGee was taken into custody and transported to St. Joseph Hospital where he is being treated for undisclosed injuries. Officials said once he is released, he will be charged with first degree murder. He also allegedly changed his Facebook profile picture to what allegedly looked to be limbs covered in blood. And he was indeed charged with first degree murder and as of 2017, he was still in prison but I have not been able to find any further updates since. Damn. That just went horribly The Hart family is awful. one of the greatest, if not the greatest. Like, it just went left. Like, completely left. Holy, bro. Jeez. Rest in peace to that 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 woman, man. I, that's tough. Like, I knew it was about to get serious. Once the music, the background music cut out, I was like, uh-oh. This is about to be something bad. That was horrible. And most successful wrestling dynasties of all time. Bret Hart. Jim the Anvil, the British Bulldog, Natalia, and of course, Teddy Hart. Teddy Hart is the outcast of the Hart family, and for reasons I'm about to explain, hopefully you'll be able to understand why. What is going on After with graduating the, the Hart Dungeon in 1998, <laughs> Teddy Hart became the youngest wrestler to ever be signed to a WWF developmental contract at just 18 years old. He was sent to go train with Dory Funk Jr. However, after four years, he was cut loose, never making a major appearance for the company. He was released for what was perceived to be attitude problems, and this was about to become a very common theme in his career. Despite being released from WWE, Teddy Hart's career was far from over. In 2003, he would begin making appearances for Ring of Honor and TNA. However, he was gone from these companies even quicker than he was gone from the WWE. On November 1st, 2003, Hart competed in a scramble match at a Ring of Honor event in Elizabeth, New Jersey. After losing the match, he then began just doing flips and moonsaults off the top of the cage onto the other wrestlers. Over and over again. What? He just kept climbing the cage and jumping onto the other wrestlers. It was a mad thing to watch. He did it so many times to the point he ended up throwing up at ringside and his actions annoyed the other wrestlers as he was not meant to be in the match and having to just constantly catch this guy who keeps jumping off the cage without anyone's permission is kind of just annoying. Just being a complete delinquent. Yeah, okay, bro. Like, so you're not supposed to even be in the match and you're still climbing to the top for people to catch you. At one point, I'm just not going to catch you. I meant the Samoa Joe to walk away like, you shouldn't be out here, bro. You break something, that's on you. After this, Teddy Hart would only wrestle two more matches with Ring of Honor ever, once in 2004 and a one-match return in 2009. And it was also because of this moment that Teddy would not last much longer in TNA. He would only wrestle a couple matches for TNA before, get this, getting into an altercation with <laughs> CM Punk. Wow. Some things never change. <laughs> the altercation came about due to his actions at the Elizabeth show, meaning in just the first four years of his career, Teddy Hart has already been blacklisted from the top three promotions in the country. For the next few years, Teddy Hart would be hired and fired by Jersey All Pro Wrestling, AAA. Damn. He would make a sensational return to the WWE, where he'd unfortunately get released before making it to the main roster, but seemingly not for disciplinary issues this time round, so uh -oh. fair enough. And he would also appear in Wrestling Society X, which is perhaps the biggest promotion that he had a proper run with and was never technically fired from. The show was cancelled. He was never released for attitude problems. That and MLW. He returned to MLW in 2017 where he was middleweight champion and part of the New Heart Foundation with Davey Boy Smith Jr. and Brian Pillman Jr. However, he was released from the company in 2019 for, yep, you guessed it, disciplinary issues. Uh -oh. Since then, Teddy Hart has not been active much in wrestling, having not wrestled since 2020. That's his wrestling career, but we haven't even hit the tip of the iceberg with Teddy Hart. Oh, we no. still have all of his legal issues to cover. Before we go any further though, we are going to give a quick content warning to say we're about to be discussing topics such as sexual assault and abuse. Uh -oh. You can use the timestamps to skip forward past this oh, part boy. if you do wish. 
On December Here we go. 2014, Hart was announced as wanted by the Royal Canadian Mountain Police on sexual assault charges, including two women, a case that was dropped in June of 2016. In January 2017... My man loves wearing that, that chain. <laughs> in every damn picture, he got that damn chain. He loved that chain. He ain't getting rid of that one. <laughs> he was arrested for a DUI, evading arrest, and auto theft. These charges were dropped later. In February 2020, he was arrested in Virginia on drug possession, and then a month later, he was arrested in Virginia for violating his bail conditions. Jeez. That same month, he was arrested in Virginia for a third time after allegedly assaulting his wrestler and girlfriend at the time, Maria Manic, assaulting her at the home of wrestler Ace Montana, who called the police, with Montana claiming he had to point a gun at heart to get him away from Manic. It was this Damn. story that finally drove Hart out of wrestling. He has only wrestled one event since this, that being a Juggalo Championship chain. wrestling event in December 2020. <laughs> the infamous but chain. nothing other than that. He has effectively been blacklisted. And yes, in case you're wondering, he did have more legal troubles. In October 2020, he was charged with injuring a disabled person, evading arrest, and drug possession. And he was arrested for these exact same charges in March 2021 once again in, you guessed it, Virginia. Damn! How many times you gotta get arrested? Damn. She's in the same state. Hey man, <laughs> hey man, he got he got more than wrestling to worry about. He need to get his life together. Hopefully, he has. I don't know. Jesus. Before anyone says a word, <laughs> a full video on Sonny will be out in the future on this channel. A couple of minutes just simply isn't enough to talk about Sonny and everything mm. that went on with her. Sonny first got into wrestling through her partner at the time, Chris Candido, and she would accompany him to shows for Smoky Mountain Wrestling, and this helped her to get noticed by the WWF, and she was signed by them in 1995 as a manager and occasional wrestler. And Sonny was entitled the original diva by mm. the WWE, and she has been credited as being someone who ushered in women's wrestling in the company. She lasted three years in the company in her first run, being released in 1998, amid rumors of painkiller addictions, problems Jeez. backstage with other wrestlers, and no showing multiple appearances. However, Sonny would stick around in wrestling. She made appearances for ECW for a bit, she appeared for WCW before they died off, and had made numerous indie appearances all across the country and the world in wrestling. And over the years, she would also make occasional appearances for WWE. She appeared at the 15th anniversary of Raw in 2007, and she appeared in the 25 Diva Battle Royal at WrestleMania 25. My God, what an awful match that was mm. and in 2011 she was inducted into the wwe hall of fame by the entire divas roster which is a huge message to send and just shows how valuable she was to WWE and how high in regard that they held her but it was mm -hmm. only the next year that would be the beginning of the end for sunny uh -oh. in 2012 sunny or tammy lynn sitch which we will now be referring to her as her real name was arrested five times in a four-week span for disorderly conduct third degree burglary and three counts of violating a protective order and this was the start of Sonny's, or Tammy Lynn Sitch's, very turbulent troubles with the law. For the next five years, Sitch was being arrested multiple times per year. The most common thing that That's Sitch was being arrested crazy. for was driving under the influence. In March 2019, Sitch was imprisoned. And this was all due to the fact that Sitch had committed so many crimes and DUIs and all this stuff in so many different states and territories, and having revoked paroles, multiple of them, and many, many warrants for her arrest, which combined into a prison sentence of one year. Sorry to people who actually know how the law works. I know I didn't explain that well. I'm just explaining it in terms that us dummies will understand. <laughs> she was released from prison in February 25th, 2020, but she's been straight back at it since being released. And it brings us to our most recent incident from Sonny or Tammy Lynn Sitch, where she was involved in a fatal car crash in Volusia County, Florida, I think that I killed a 75-year-old man. I think I Sitch crashed this. into the rear of the man's car who had been stopped at a stoplight, and witnesses had told the police that Sitch was driving at a high speed when she crashed into the car. 
She was arrested on DUI and manslaughter charges and has been in jail while she awaits her trial. Yeah. She is facing 26 years in prison if she is convicted of her manslaughter and DUI charges. 2,500 likes for a full video on Sonny. My yeah, uh, I, I definitely do remember that story, bro. That's just... What the hell? Ah, man. It, it that just that's just a, a, a horrible situation you just had a stoplight you're chilling following the law not thinking anything and then the next thing you know you get hit and your life is over it's over it's done there's no rhyme or reason your life is over because of someone else's careless actions getting behind the wheel driving at high speeds and inebriated under the influence and your life is done because of someone else's actions that's that's awful bro that's oh man that is truly awful man uh yeah this was a unfortunate video man like like i said at the beginning you know it's it's cool you want to be a wrestler but then when you start doing other things extracurriculars and start having this criminal presence becomes a problem man comment down below let me know do you know any other wrestlers that you know started off you know as innocent wrestlers trying to make a name for themselves and then they just you know decide to go rogue and start doing criminal activities as their extracurriculars outside of wrestling let me know down below if you know any other infamous wrestlers that were <laughs> coincidentally criminals as well but i appreciate all love and support road to 150k and i'm still the undisputed youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking it with me see you on the next one